Welcome to Kinda Influenced, where two millennial moms navigate life and career on the internet. We're your hosts, Zoe Potter and Sarah Dickey. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and let's chat. Hey, episode Uh, two! We did it. I feel like the scariest part is just launching episode one. Are you sure about that? I mean, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I hope you guys liked it. I hope so too. And the the thing is, is like in full transparency, as we're recording episode two right now, we have not launched episode one. So we We, have no clue. We haven't even announced that we have a podcast. You don't know yet. Imagine everyone's just like, what a terrible idea. Oh, please. Neither of you have a voice for podcasts. (laughs) My mom used to tell me I had a face for radio when I was growing up. So I feel (gasps) like I'm my mom was a lovely human being. God rest Are her you soul. sure? <laughs> she really was. Uh, but she was like, I think she was saying it in like a joking way. Um, okay. But she's probably like, Sarah, your dreams are coming true now. Or my that's, dreams for you are coming true. <laughs> that's perfect. That's we're gonna, just like. We'll dedicate this episode to Carol. Yeah, this is for you, Carol. <laughs> Couple of faces for radio. <laughs> She's such a kind soul. Living um, her dream. <laughs> ah, she'd be proud. Hopefully you guys are also proud. I hope so. Like what we would love is if you would give us some feedback in the comments, please let us know, um, write us some comments, give us some ratings. If this is, if you're watching this on YouTube, give us a big old thumbs up, subscribe. Also, if you're listening to this audio on Spotify, or if you're listening to it on Apple, just, you know, if you're working from home one day, just pop onto YouTube and throw this up, throw this up and I know we could be your background noise. Like we could be, we'll just hang out together. <laughs> We're not even, we don't even have shrill voices. So like it's good background noise. Are we sure about that? <laughs> no, not at all. Okay. Uh, but also like if you're going to give us anything less than a five, scroll to the podcast underneath of us and give it to them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's cruel. <laughs> don't do that. But don't you, do that. I mean, just, just you could. <laughs> <laughs> Better us than them. Wait, them than us? Anyways, how's yeah. your life? <laughs> um, with that being said, we have a Instagram. And oh, we have an Instagram. Yeah. We have a TikTok. We have a YouTube. We got all the socials except the X. Nobody's on the X. I don't even know what that is. A- Elon Musk is on there. And nah, he's I'm hanging good. out. And no shame. No shame or shade to you if you're on the X. We're not on the X. No. It literally sounds like I'm talking about a drug right now. It does. Or poor. <laughs> Both totally Both. fine. But like, I'm not on it today. No, no, not today. No. no. Um, kind of influenced podcast across yes. the board. Find Kept us. Kept it really simple. Us. Also, I think down the road too, as things pick up, we're going to start doing a lot of like in corporations where we're going to ask you questions. We're going to ask you polls. We're going to like get you involved. Yes in this podcast we should do like a call-in episode oh I don't know how we would do that because do you even have a home phone anymore but it'd be fun we've got to make it work there's got to be a way to do that (laughs) yeah wouldn't that be fun voice memos literally just voice memo us and then we can like give you very poor advice over the internet (laughs) that you may not want unsolicited not wanted advice (laughs) we're both really used to unsolicited unwanted advice so it'd probably be good it probably would be good for us, um, <laughs> not necessarily for them. But you know what? Because we're so used to so much unsolicited advice, we're very nice about it. Like, very we're never nice. going to be mean to you about it. No. <laughs> Zero judgment, uh, too. None at all. None. None. What has your week been like, friend? Mm, busy. What have you also, done? Well, yesterday we had like a little mini staycation. We went to Toronto for the day. Andrew yep. took the day off work and we just had like a family outing. My my girlfriend was down. My God said we like all went out for the day. Reese went to daycare, found out she was PM blood, TMI, oh. PM, PM blood, my dog. Re- Re- I was say, Reese is a dog. <laughs> Reese is a dog. I had a little bit of confusion yesterday on my Instagram stories when I mentioned that and they're like, your child went to daycare and now what's happening? You called a vet? I'm like, yeah, the vet is for my dog. I promise you it's not my child. Oh, oh gosh. So I took her to the vet this morning. Yes. Had a little checkup. I mean, she's okay. Good. All in all, she's okay. We're monitoring her for like the next 24 hours and just okay. we'll go I from was- there. I was worried about little Reese. She's the cutest thing ever. She's so cute. She's napping right here. If you're listening to this, um, she, like I'm in my bedroom and she's like having a snooze on the couch. Oh, a no, that's, that's not a, a bed. Couch. That's, that's my a bed. bed. 
It's fine. I use my bed like a couch. Mm-hmm. Do you eat in bed? No. So that's the one thing that I'm just like, I can't do the crumbs. I can't do like, I don't know. Like there's just something about eating in bed. Do you eat in bed? All I don't judge. I don't judge anybody who no. eats in bed. My like, one of my best friends is like, that's disgusting. Like, I don't know how you do that. And I was like, because it's the most comfortable place in the entire world. Okay. Like, I don't have like dinner in bed every night, but I will like. Oh, dinner, like a straight up like <laughs> bowl of pasta and like cooked chicken and stuff. Like chicken fingers and hot sauce in bed. Like I have no shame. Okay, I do. We definitely do that hardcore when we're in hotels. Like yeah. if we're at a hotel, we will have a bed picnic all the way. Yeah. But following that up with, do you have a TV in your bedroom? No. Because that's another really controversial topic. It is. I We yeah. don't. Do you? Okay, so we don't. We never have. Yeah. And I've always been like anti-TV in the bedroom. Yeah. However... This year, I think that I'm going to get a little TV, like not a huge TV, but the reason why is because again, if you're listening to this just on audio and not in the video, I'm in my bedroom right now, but I'm also in my office right now. I have like a hybrid bedroom office Office. combo because our room's so large. And because of that, I have like a space like right up there and I would love to have my like coffee shop jazz on YouTube playing while I'm Oh yeah. Right? Makes sense. That's the only reason why. And I'm sure if there's, you know, like a show that we're wanting to finish up and we want to get like all comfy in bed, that would be nice to have a TV. Yeah. But I don't think it would be like a regular thing. Like uh, I'm like an iPad girly in bed. Like when I go to bed, oh, yeah. I need my iPad. I need my water bottle and I need it, like my eye mask. And every single night that is what I take to bed. And I fall asleep watching some form of Bravo every single night. It's always Real Housewives. I mean, or Vanderpump or Summer House or Winter House. Like there's, there's exceptions to the rules. I'm not a All one trick pony. <laughs> um, but yeah, every single night without fail. Okay. So that, I mean, could you benefit from a TV or no? You're just hardcore no. I think I'm hardcore no. Cause I just still, I don't know. I can like, I don't know. I don't know why. I also think they're kind of, no, it's... no offense if you have one in your room. I no, think definitely kind of not. Like, oh yeah. Visually. Right? Yeah. But like, Like, I'm thinking if it's flat enough up here, like I'm pointing my walls black. So like, it's just going to blend in. You're not even going to see it. No, no, no. It'd be fine. And our room is very like New Mexican chic. Um, Oh yeah. Okay. There's like, we have like a cow skull over our bed and like, Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah, And like lots of macrame. So I just feel like it doesn't like go with the vibes and I'm a vibes (laughs) girly. (laughs) The vibe. Can't mess with these vibes. Um, Okay. How's your how's your week? How's your like it's almost Friday? Is it? Yeah, tomorrow's Friday. Oh good lord. Um week's what good. Is time? Oh, it's a social construct. Um <laughs> uh, my week's been good. I started rewatching Vanderpump Rules. I honestly like have had a pretty boring week. Um yeah. but yeah, like we we hung out at, at home a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, RSV is rolling rampant, so we're not going outside Ooh, yeah. right now. We're not really leaving the house, so just lots of like walks. Um, Sally has started to like stand. So, um, for those of you that like don't, I have a set almost eight month old. Um, and she like pushes down on this. We got a kitty couch for Christmas, which like if you need any to like this movement, um. <laughs> If you're not watching this, I'm really sorry. Um, we got a kitty coach for Christmas. So she'll put her little two hands down and she'll like stand onto her back feet. And I'm like, you can't walk yet. Like that's actually not allowed. She's getting there. She's getting Terrifying. there. Is so, she a big crawler? Like, does she crawl a lot? She's She like army crawls. Uh, that was Theo. Yeah. Did he ever like, like crawl crawl? Yeah. Very short though. Like I feel like, actually, you know what? That was Marlo. Marlo was a short, like, couple months of crawling straight into walk. She was walking at 11 months old. <gasps> Theo didn't walk until he was over a year old. Like he was, that Theo's, a, so Theo's much a little casual about everything. Like he takes it. his time. That's like a second child thing though, isn't it? Like the I've second heard. kid. Yeah. yeah. Second kid. And I've also heard boy. That's a boy thing too. Oh, they're like, so. people will bring me things. It's the patriarchy. <laughs> <laughs> In the year after the Barbie movie. Ugh. I know we can't even say the year of the Barbie movie anymore. Oh my gosh. We we need to have something new to say. In the we year do. of Saltburn. No, but that was last year too. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, Sarah, it's Look, been I, enough I, days that you should have been able to see it by now. I have to start rewatching Vanderpump Rules from the beginning oh again. Oh my God. The name. Okay. Anyways. 
I'm not judging you. And I don't want anyone to think that I'm judging anyone who what, listen, I am a millennial girly. I grew up on the Hills. I watched yeah. Laguna beach. I was that girl. Listen, no judgment. Mm-hmm. I just haven't been able to get into it. Like I just, I've tried. Have you tried? Yeah. I watched like the whole, I think the first ep- with like Kyle and like all, like I did oh, watch the whole first. So season. I actually have like, a, I have a roadmap to Re- Real Housewives of like how you actually have to get into it. Cause it's oh, really? too hard. Yeah. It's too hard to start at the early seasons of like the original oh. ones. Cause they're so bad. And so you have oh. to be like bought into the franchise before you can like get into like season one of the OC. Cause like Vicky yeah. Gunvalson is driving a minivan. Like it is, it's a different time. So you have to start with Salt Lake City because it's the most current one and there's only four seasons. You could also do Miami retrospectively, but Miami starts old and then goes new. Uh, like this is, I could talk, we could do an entire episode on my obsession with Real Housewives. Okay. You'd have to let me catch up though, because yes. I genuinely have no idea what you're talking about. That's, so- I mean, it's fair. If, let us know in the comments, do you want me to watch Real Housewives and should we have a whole episode about this? Yes. Let, but if there's no interest, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm going to create so many bot <laughs> accounts. <laughs> watch Real Housewives. Zoe, Wait. what are you doing? I'm judging you. <laughs> this is the perfect reason to put a TV in your room. Yeah. Um, that's a great transition though to what's on your For You page. So this, we record episodes like a little bit in advance, obviously you know, cause we had to edit them and stuff. So last night or the night before was the Real Housewives um, season finale for mm. uh, Salt Lake City. And okay. It's a big deal. Probably not going to make a lot of sense to you right now. So, but that's fine. No, but that's fine. Um, so there is like this, th- it was a dying franchise. Season four was like kind of boring to be honest. And then the last episode, there's this like massive drop. So I feel like I can spoil this now because spoiler alert, if you haven't watched it, but this is going to be kind of old. So it turns out that Monica, who's like a new character on the series, is actually Reality Von Tease, who is this troll account that's been like baiting the women for years, like <gasps> making fun of them, being mean to them on the online. <gasps> Their like only goal was to like get rid of Jen Shaw, who's now in jail. Um, so like Monica, insane. Wait, so- did Monica like? Troll herself too to like no. keep up with the guys. Well, so she just started this year, so she <gasps> like had never really been trolled. So um, Heather Gay found out about it and shared with the rest of the girls, and it was like wild. Like it was the most <gasps> wild season finale, like rivals Scandal, which is kind of a big deal. Uh, I I don't know, but I know. Yeah, you know what right? I mean. I know what that means. So my entire for you page for the last few days has just been like Bravo videos of that, and it is mind-blowing and amazing all at the same time shame on her shame and like get out of here don't be an internet troll that's so mean yeah like the calls coming from inside the house like Uh why would you do that and she literally like started her career and ended it in the same day it's over for you like you're never gonna be welcome back on reality tv or she'll get her own spinoff that what do you think she was like aiming for I With think, this? I don't think she ever wanted to be found out, to be honest, but she did have this like epic line that was like, even it, like even Gossip Girl got found out at the end. And I was like, oh, that was good. Damn. Monica. Yeah. So that's my for you page right now. That and I have one more because I have to share too. Mm-hmm. I'm dying my hair. Yeah. You sent me a photo and I'm like, okay, it's almost like a more intense version of what I had in the summer. Yes. 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 Um, so my entire for you page is also just hair dye videos right now. Are you going to do it yourself? Yeah, of course I am. I have no shame. Oh, I know. But I just, <laughs> because it's so much lighter and like orangier than what you have. Oh, should I not spoil it? No, you're fine. Okay. Then I'm curious. Like, do you think it's going to like yeah. lift? Yeah. So yeah. This is my plan. I'm going to just, okay. just do a color remover. And then a uh, bleach bath. Girl. So my color remover is just going to turn my hair orange. And yeah, then that's I'll what you want. Bleach bath. It's perfect. And I'm going back long. <gasps> I know. No, I cut my hair so we could be twins. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. That's so rude. I have to buy new extensions anyway. And so I figured if I buy new extensions, I, I mean, I don't have to buy new extensions. I don't need to wear extensions. But if I'm going to buy new ones, I might as well buy long ones. Okay. okay. Well, that's fine. I'll just be over here with my short hair crying in the corner. Your hair okay. goes so your hair grows fast. Mine is eh, it used to um before it started falling out of my head. <laughs> uh, postpartum. Mm, no, not postpartum. I think age. Just age and hormones. Oh, and my mom said of, the same thing happened to her. All of it's rude. Ugh, uh, being a woman is hard. 
the worst. What's on your for you page? Mm, okay. Buckle Uh-oh. up. Buckle up. Salt burn was quick. It came, it went, it flew out like three, four days and then it was gone. And now, okay. There's the nine month cruise. Have you heard about the nine month cruise? No. Okay. People have paid to go on a cruise for nine months. What? Why? Okay. I'm not anti-cruise for everyone. I don't, I have, there's no interest in me whatsoever that wants to go on a big boat locked on the ocean with hundreds of people. I don't know. Like it's just a recipe for disaster in my opinion. People never seen the Titanic. Okay. Oh, just wait. So uh, there's the nine month cruise TikTok for you page. I'm not technically on it, which is fine because I have no interest in the ocean. It's scarce. Listen, I have all the interest in the ocean. I don't want to go on the ocean. No, I'm with you. And my husband's family is like so pro cruise. And I'm like, no, absolutely not. So anyways, there's this nine month cruise where people have paid an absurd amount of money to sail on the ocean, do like a cruise around the world on this big boat. Okay. Nine months. Almost like how much money? I, okay. I've heard varying amounts, but it's thousands, like not like, like we're talking like 50,000 upwards to like 80,000. Like it's a lot of money. Do they get free food and drink though the whole time? Yes. However, now there is a wine shortage happening. We're only like, I think we're only like a month or two in quote, like, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, because obviously it's not my normal for you page. However, it has started to become my for you page because my for you page has been all about the North sea and the Drake passage. Have you heard about yes. either? Yes. Scary sea situations. But do you kind of want to do it? No, absolutely not. Oh, like, I kind of want to go no- on it. It's so scary. Yeah. It's so scary. So apparently the nine month cruise ship is due to go through the Drake's passage, which is like one of the scare. So it said that you can either have the Drake shake or the Drake lake. So the Drake shake is like very intense turmoil water, like super dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's in, it's one of the most like dangerous bodies of water in the whole entire world. Okay. Now this cruise ship is apparently preparing to go this now again this is all hearsay this is what my for you page is telling me and first of all they're on a wine shortage so I, no one can be drinking wine if they're like bopping around on the drink straight passage. vodka but they just went through a storm a tropical tropical traditional tropical storm like nothing crazy and the boat is like flooding like full like it's an old ship apparently they're showing like snippets of like the workout area just like water like leaks coming in and i'm like they want to try to attempt to cross the drake passage in this ship shop home depot belt boat with so many people on board and no wine like it's okay i mean this in the most non um like mean way this is like giving you titanic submarine all over i'm again. so scared for these people and they're like not they're just like it's fine i'm like is it fine like, it's probably not fine guys oh my god so par- yeah so that's what's on my for you page right now is a little bit of like sea talk north sea drake's passage like just like in general like it never leaves. It comes up every few weeks, like yeah. a video. You know the ho, ho, ho. Do you know that? The sound where they do like the, the, the creepy sound and then they put the creepy video of the water? Nope. Stop. Come on. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like these guys singing a cap- cappella with really low voices. Nope. And it's creepy music. Nope. Oh my God. I, I, I know that somebody's going to agree with me and they're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. It's that and scary sea videos. That's my free you. Right That's, now. I mean, terrifying. It's probably helping you not doom scroll before bed. Oh, I'm not, I'm not touching my phone before bed. Yeah. Cause that's horrifying. Wanna, no, I don't want to no. have dreams about like sea dreams. Water. No, I'm good. No, I'm so good. I do want to take a boat to Ant- Antarctica though. Oh God. It's I so think it'd be kind of cool. Now, all of the videos that I've seen about that specific situation yeah. look a lot safer. Totally. And they're like scientists, like yeah. having their meetings in the middle of the day about penguins. Like, that sounds great. I'll watch from afar. Okay. I'll I'll, I'll che- FaceTime you. <laughs> I'll cheer from the sidelines. I don't think there's internet. Um, <laughs> it's fine. Uh, what are we talking about this week? Uh, let's talk about diets. Ooh, heavy hitter. 
I know we figured because it's January still. Yep. A lot of stuff floating around, you know, new year, new me. What are you doing? 75 hard. You did 75 hard. Actually, that's a really good way. Didn't you do a 75 hard? I have. Yeah. Yeah. I have done everything. Yeah. You name it. I've like throw a dart at it and I've done it. Um, is that a saying? Did I just make that up? It should be. No, that sounds, that sounds real. Like legit. Throw a dart at it. Um, yeah. So I did 75 hard. It was terrible. Like it wasn't terrible. It's like, I think 75 hard is more of like a mental thing than a diet than like, I mean, it's obviously rooted in diet culture. Also, huge trigger warning. If this yeah, if, episode, if you're uncomfortable with talking about skip over us. weight loss, like dieting, anything related to that, you please don't watch this episode. No. We're not going to be talking about this every time. No. It's just, it just it go hits. back to the beginning and rewatch that portion because it was yeah. cute. <laughs> and catch us next week. We'll get yeah. something more fun to, you know, your cup of tea. And that's just it. Like both of us have lived a life of dieting. So Mm -hmm. we know firsthand, I mean, we're not experts, we're not dietitians, we're not doctors, but at the same time, we've lived such a full life at our ripe old age of 30 something. And yeah, I, I think that we could talk about it and have a conversation about it. And I think it's interesting now that we both also have girls. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that that does change, not change, but I think it like also magnifies it and we can get into that. But so, Mm -hmm. yeah, so I did 75 hard. I think 75 hard is more of like a mental challenge, truthfully, than anything. It is obviously rooted in diet culture. And I think I just said that Um, you follow some form of diet plan. And that's kind of the thing that I appreciated about 75 hard is that it was anything that you wanted. So for me, I did 800 gram challenge, which is something that I actually just like practice naturally in my life. So the 800 gram challenge is you eat 800 grams of fruits and vegetables every day. And like, oh, okay. I think that that's really great. Um, I still am like, a, a, I won't call myself a competitive athlete, but I do CrossFit and I do compete yeah. in CrossFit here and there. So I do, I do monitor like what I put in my body. And I, mm-hmm. I feel like that's going to rile people up because I'm not a size two, but I do. And I, you know, I make sure that I eat my, the, the amount of protein I need every day mm-hmm. and I eat food that's going to help me recover. I always say that like I fuel my body, like it's a car. I put yep. superior gas into it because I want to take really good care of it. And I think that that's like how most people typically live. Yeah. Um, so the diet portion wasn't, I think, what the issue with 75 hard was. For me, the issue was that it's two 45-minute workouts a day. So like, Really? Yeah. So if you don't, and one of them has to be outside. And so I live in mm. Alberta, and I no. did this in January a few years back. Um, before it was, like, really big on, I think it might have been, like, the first year that the people started talking about it on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, like, I was outside in minus 40 going for a walk because I was so committed to, like, finishing this challenge. Oh and my God. so it's ridiculous. And the the cool thing, I think, about 75 Hard is that a lot of people have, like, done spinoffs of it. So, like, Lucia yeah. Carbo right now is, like, doing 150 Soft, which is, like, cute. It's, like... I love it. Yeah, like, 30 minutes of joyful movement a day. Do something that you like for 15 minutes. Drink a glass of water. One like, glass of water. Like, yeah. Yes, yeah. that are great. Yeah. So I think 75 Hard, I will never do it again. I think yeah. I joked about doing it potentially this year because I was like, I could. Let's see what happens. Um, but then I was like, oh, that's new year, new me culture still like getting into my head. Ingrained. Which is wild that at this point it's still there. Um, yeah. So that was like one of them. I've done some dumb diet. When did you start dieting? I think my first like official thing like that I can recall because mm-hmm. there have been moments in my life when I was really young, like yeah. young, young where I acknowledged that obviously I was not the typical size that Mm -hmm. other kids my age were. Um, and that, you know, my, both my mom and my dad were heavier set individuals. Um, my mom's weights fluctuated her whole life. Even my dad's like, it it, it is genetics. Like that is a huge part of it. And I think that I just, I was very visually aware of the world that I was living in and the fact that I wasn't small. So I think that the, but the first time that I can remember actually trying to change my body, I think I was 12. And that's when I begged, begged my mom. I wanted slim fast shakes, I wanted slim fast bars. I remember I had, so this was way before the internet and like all that. I had like pictures, like 
physical pictures of myself that I like cut my face out of. And like, I would like glue it on top of like Lindsay Lohan's body as inspiration photos for myself. You that's heartbreaking. Yeah. And I like set up a little workout area in my Nana's office. And like, I used to like count how many things. So I didn't know what counting calories were. I didn't know what any of that was. So I would count like how many grapes I could have, or like how many Cheerios I could have, or like how many, like, it was so bad. That's awful. Yeah. That's That's the earliest. I mean, I definitely did do things when I was younger, like that were but I think that was my first like official official like diet. diet I'm actually on, I'm on the slim fast diet yeah literally slim fast is a motherfucker I think it got like so many of us because it just seemed so easy yeah drink these shakes and you're Do gonna this. be fine yeah you're good I've done all of them I've done like the actual like pills like I used to yeah. like secretly buy them and then hide them in my room when I was like a teenager. Cause my mom would never have any of it. Like my yeah. mom, that's the one thing I know that a lot of our age group struggled with, like the trauma of their mothers passing mm-hmm. it on to them. I'm very grateful that my mom never shamed me or forced me into dieting. Like she never signed us both up for Weight Watchers or did anything like that. But she was like super anti, like, you're not going to have pills. You're not going to do this. That's awesome. And, but I still did it. Like I was a teenager. Like, of course I'm going to do it anyway. So I bought them all. I snuck them and I hid them in my room and I would pop them. I would do caffeine. I would do like I do it all. (laughs) The little rooster ones, the pink rooster pills. I took those all the time. Jesse Spano on Saved by the Bell. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, so you, did you, you've always been in like a bigger body? Always. Like my entire life from day one. I mean, my weight has fluctuated Mm -hmm. Um, in high school, later years of high school. I definitely was smaller. Like I would, I wasn't small. I've never been small. I was smaller and more, you know socially accepted size, yeah. I guess you would say, but I was never small. And I was always like the biggest size at garage when I was 17 shopping there. Do you know what I mean? And like, yeah, sometimes yeah. those 11s wouldn't fit or like yeah. those 10s wouldn't fit. Um, and then I went into college. I gained weight. Obviously everyone gains weight in college. That's usually the norm. I didn't gain like a ton of weight, but it did. I did get, gain some over the years, mm-hmm. got married, did all that. And then when Marlo was little, Um, obviously I like, I did all kinds of dieting. I was a vegetarian for a while. I, not that that's a diet, but that was like, my intention was to like, Oh, I just need to stop eating meat and then I'll be skinny. I did that for a year and other reasons too. I just wanted to like, I don't know, test the waters on everything. Yeah. But it's interesting. I, so I grew up thin. I was like thin blonde, big boobs. Um, and I think that that was I mean, I was a monster when I was younger and I've talked Mm -hmm. about this. Like I was a bully. I was not a nice girl. Um, And it has really messed with me. I think like I have gone back and like apologized to the people that I was an asshole to. And Mm -hmm. I think part of it was I was just so insecure that I bullied other people because I hated myself and it would take the, it would take the pressure off of me. Um, But yeah, like I was not, I'm not proud of who I was when I was a younger kid. And I think that it, that sucks. And I, mm-hmm. I hope Sully never is like me when she grows up. Um, I, like I wasn't a monster, but I'm not someone that I'm proud of. Like I, yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. Um, Fully. but so I gained a lot of weight after high school. Um, yep. and that was sort of like, it was very shocking to me, but when I was younger, when I was like 12 too, um, I wasn't thin enough. Like I always yeah. had like a bit of a belly pooch. And mm-hmm. so I was like, mom, I want to go on Weight Watchers. And she's like, okay. Um, my mom was British and old and always very, my mom was, I I hate speaking poorly of her now because she's not here anymore. And so I, I it hurts, I think. Um, but she just wanted to like, she was so obsessed with how she looked also. Like I didn't, I never saw my mom until she got diagnosed with cancer, um, without makeup on never, not once. Wow. Um, like it the was pressure, the pressure that would have put on you as a young child. Like, so that's like prim so and stressful. proper. Yeah. Um, and so when I was like, Hey, can I go on Weight Watchers? Cause I had seen a commercial about it on TV or like Jenny Craig or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, she was like, yeah, of course. And so that was my first diet. And then when I failed at it and didn't lose the weight, cause I was already a 
thin 12 year old, Mm -hmm. I was in trouble. And then it kind of just like perpetuated my entire life. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember like finding out one of my girlfriends had an eating disorder. She was bulimic. And I was like, oh, can you teach me how? And like, that's so messed up. I know. Like that's, that's unfortunately, I know it's, it's, it's definitely not gone. Like the the universe still, like, especially now every January, the world reminds me that it is still very much a diet friendly universe out there. Like totally, it's unfortunate, but you know what? I'm always going to be an advocate for bodily autonomy. If you want to diet, if you want to lose weight, if you want to intentionally lose weight, if you want to cut out food groups, like you do what you got to do. I've, this is just what I've lived and I've learned and I've experienced. And Mm -hmm. I know that I'm not the only one. And I know I'm not the only one who's tired of it. Like I'm just tired, especially to the point where I'm like, obviously dieting doesn't work or else it wouldn't be a $30 billion company or and and there wouldn't be. And if there was a magic, you know, situation that you could have where you can be like, this is the diet that works. There wouldn't be like so many variations of weird diets out there and weird diet drugs and weird diet. Like there wouldn't be all of that out there if something worked. (laughs) Yes. And worked all the time. Cause you can find all the time. And like, you can find things that work, but don't work long-term. No. Right. Like once I only ate potatoes for a month, no, three months, three months of just potatoes and like two potatoes a day. That's all I ate. You good. Oh my God. (laughs) No, I have a real love hate relationship with potatoes now. Um, But like I lost a ton of weight. Of course you would. You were only eating potatoes like 200 for three calories months. a day. Um, but I gained it all back That's right away. Like terrible. Things will work, but they always, oh, it always God. comes back. It's not I possible. did the, did you ever do the juice trend? The juicing? If I oh ever drink celery juice again, as long as I live, I will die. I, I did juicing for, I think three or four days straight. All I did was juicing and like this was before my wedding, I think it was. So I wanted to like lose a ton of weight and like stuff like that. So my boss at the time, he was like going through all his stuff and he gave me a bunch of his old appliances and one of them was a juicer. So I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to just do some juicing. (laughs) And I juiced everything. I juiced for three days straight. I, the acid reflux, I can still taste coming because the amount of acidics that were, I I can't, I couldn't eat beets for years. I would, the, the blood looking drink of beets. I couldn't eat them for years. I love beets. I couldn't eat them. Oh, that's a sad one. It sucks. That's, like, that's how I feel with potatoes. Oh, and potatoes are so good. Yeah, they're fine. I Well, I mean, if you <laughs> ate them for three months straight and that's all you ate, I'd feel the same way. Yeah, like they're, I, whatever, we have them now. But it's a food that I couldn't have in my house. Like I could not have potato. I don't think I bought potatoes until I was pregnant for like probably five years. Truly, I think that if something is making you that opposed to it for so long, there's a red flag. Like something, something's got to give. Yes. Like I couldn't eat a banana for the longest time because I, when I, one of my diet drug of choice was keto. I was a keto girl. Oh, I yeah. was the low fat, high, low carb, high fat. High fat. Like yeah. I wasn't eating like sticks of butter for breakfast, but at the same time, like I couldn't eat a banana for years because I obviously cut them out for like a year and a half of my life when I was doing keto. And like, I was scared. I was scared of the carbs. Yeah. I was scared of the sugars. I was scared. Like the things my body craved when I was on this diet were not normal. I craved a bagel. I just wanted a bagel and I wanted an orange, like a big juicy, juicy or- orange. Yes. When, if your diet's telling you, you can't have an orange, an orange, there's so many red flags. Like you totally. can't keep up with it. <laughs> It's, it is, it's wild. It's wild how much like trauma and pain it does. And it's, I want like, how much, do you get a lot of like diet feedback or like recommendations sharing what I eat in a day's? Oh my God. It's never ending. Everyone and their uncle wants to talk about how wonderful dieting has been for them. And I'm like, I've been there, Barbara. I have lost so much weight with yeah. keto and like this and that. And like, I've been there. You don't think that I've been there. Look at me. Of course I've been there. I've tried them all. I've done them all. Everyone that, oh my gosh, the amount of comments I get saying like, you should try intermittent fasting. Oh my God. It's the greatest thing of all. I'm like, 
It literally- Daniel, Daniel, you don't think I know about intermittent fasting. Daniel, that's how I started one of the hardest eating disorders I've ever had in my entire life thanks to intermittent fasting. I think if I had to choose one of these diet things that I hate the most, it would probably be intermittent fasting. I just, I just, I, I, so I think that when I started keto, so I did keto for so long. Yeah. And one of the things that went along with keto was intermittent fasting. Those mm-hmm. two went hand in hand. They're best friends. They were They're like having sleepovers. BFFs yes. together till the end. All the time. <laughs> so it went from me, like obviously cutting out food groups. And then it went to me, you know, not eating enough calories to sustain, you know, my daily life. And then it went from there that I was like cutting out meals. And then from there it was, oh, I wonder how many days I could go with just not eating. And then all of these things just started like, I think I have an eating disorder. Yes. And I think that it's not the eating disorder that I've had my whole life, which is binge eating. Mm-hmm. It's now transformed into something completely new. It's, it is wild. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just like how much you're willing to like put your body through to see that number on the scale, just like go down yeah. a little bit. Oh yeah. It's like a drug. It's like, you just want to see it go lower and lower and mm-hmm. lower. It's like, I'll do anything, anything yeah. to get. And it's, it's, scarily an addiction. And so like, I'm, I'm very much the type of person that I'm like, I want everyone in the universe to just be okay. I don't, I, if they're dieting, if they're this, but I know I wasn't okay when I was dieting. I have a very like addictive mindset when it comes to dieting, it's all or nothing for me. And, um, my binge eating actually was at its worst when I was dieting because I was like depriving myself for so long that when I would gain 10 pounds in a weekend, oh, in a yeah. weekend, Sarah, because I would go just like days without eating. And then I would just gorge and gorge and gorge. Totally. And then the next week I just, it's like a cycle. I just do it it's all non-stop. over again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like, it's interesting. Cause I like, I very much so I like do what you do. It's best for you. I mm-hmm. don't give a shit what you do to yourself. No. As long as you're like, you're feeling good. You're happy with the decisions that yeah. you make. I always say, if you can do something and you could put yourself on the front page of a newspaper and be proud of what you did. Awesome. Go for yep. it. Yep. And like, that's fine. Um, please don't like murder people. Like that's not pretty cool. No, no. And but, don't like, hurt yourself. If you're hurting hurt yourself. yourself with what you're consuming or not consuming. Totally. There's, there's something that needs to be looked over. Like yes, we totally. need to reevaluate the situation. And I had to get like really comfortable with people being very conscious of what they eat, being part of like the CrossFit world. So I yes. coach and do CrossFit and mm-hmm. macros are something that we talk about all the time. Um, People count macros nonstop. And it yep. is something that like I've obviously I've done. Um, My two of my very, very good friends count macros and we're in a group chat and they talk about them. And I've just had to like, accept that that's what's right for their lives. And it's okay that yeah. it's not what's right for me. Um, no, there's nothing no, wrong exactly. with that. No. Yeah. And it's, you know, my past with diet culture has also stopped me from being able to do things that I really want to do. I really want to do Olympic weightlifting, um, mm. but I can't do it because there's weight classes. I don't weigh myself. I don't want to know what I weigh. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have to like cut to make it into a weight class. Yeah. Um, so it has like, it's impacted my life in more ways than just like my mental health at the same time, because it's like stopped me from doing things because I was so deep into it. Do you think you'd ever get to a point in your life where you could be okay with something like that so that you could do something? Or do you, for me personally, like I know, I, I know like deep down in my soul, as soon as I start counting calories, as soon as I start like limiting things, I know that I will just die. Like I will just fall in head Head first. first. Yeah. I don't Uh, know if that'll ever change, but I I think it's going to always be somewhat of a struggle there. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. Um, I don't, I'm not there right now, especially postpartum, um, Mm -hmm. at all. Uh, I do like, I count my protein still, um, because I want to be able to consume it, but it's the only thing I count. And like, it's loose counting. Like I'm like, oh, this chicken breast has 25 grams of protein in it. I need X amount to survive today. Um, and that's just to like, keep myself healthy. Um, but I don't think that I could get to a point where I'm like counting macros and making a macro goal. I don't, I don't think it would be healthy or sustainable for me anymore. Um, and I can't do, I'm, I'm same as you. Like I can't kind of do it. I think my calorie goal is, you know, X amount. If I don't hit that amount, I'm mad at myself, which is like eating needs to be fluid. It, it ebbs and flows. And like you said, like I also binge eating was like 
that's my, that's the thing that I like have to heal myself from still too. Yeah. Um, cause it happens still, especially when I was pregnant, I like, it was pretty bad at binge eating. Like I would just be mm-hmm. like, well, I'm hungry. I can eat whatever I want. I'm pregnant. Go for it. Yeah. Um, and then you just feel so guilty and like, and it, it's literally the worst cycle to ever awful. experience because yeah. you literally, I, I follow so many like dietitians and like people who specialize, especially in like intuitive eating mm-hmm. and like focusing on binge eating recovery and everything. And I've, I've put so many time and like effort into learning it, but until you live it firsthand, like I want to proudly be able to say I've not binged for a long period of time. Yeah. And since I've stopped dieting, it has helped. Yeah. I mean, I definitely don't binge near as much as I used to. No. Um, but I do know that obviously I would like to be able to just say that I don't have to worry about it anymore. Like I, yeah. like I would just like to be able to wake up and not fi- like, I don't want to think about food. I don't want to think yeah. about it. Like, no, I don't want to imagine. Have to- I don't think that's the thing is like people who don't has, have never experienced, you know, a a bad relationship with food. The fact that they don't, they just don't get it. There's like, well, just don't eat it then. Or just like, don't eat, just stop when you're full. It's like, you don't understand. You don't get it. Like there's, there's, there's no, I would, oh my God, the amount of money I'd pay. I would give literally like anything to not think about food in that totally sense. and just like to like be able to like there are foods that I still can't have in our house because I will eat them all like I can't yeah. I can't have Oreos in our house because I can't have two yeah. and while it's fine to indulge I feel like shit after and like mentally yeah. I feel really broken and like it's not a healthy cycle at all it's not it's so definitely just, not I would love to also like keep a fucking box of Oreos in my house yeah for me that's chips I really I mean I've gotten a lot better over the years yeah. and like I used to be able to sit down and like eat an entire bag of chips after a full meal yeah. like I would have a full meal at dinner and then like sit down and eat an entire bag of chips I I won't do that anymore for many reasons, because of like, I'm in recovery from binge eating. And then on top of that too, I feel like shit after, Mm -hmm. you know, but at the same time, like I still struggle, like in my brain, I'm like, I could do this. Like I could could easily do this. No problem at all, but I have to physically stop myself. So yeah. I same. I wish I just didn't have to think about food. And that's what I want for Sully. Like I want Sully to not have to think about food. To worry about it, to dread it, to like focus to hyper focus on yes. it for day. like sometimes like I get to the point where I can't stop thinking about it to the point where it like makes me sick like yeah. I literally get physically sick because I can't stop like I yeah. can't stop my brain from doing it mm-hmm. and it's it's such a hard so if anyone out there is feeling like or has felt or like this is what you struggle with you're not alone no like it's so it's so much more common than you'd ever think And I think the stigma around it too, like people get so offended by, you know, when I say that I'm not dieting, it's like, but you don't understand. Like, I can't just be like, I'm going to go on a healthy, you know, calorie deficit and I'm going to like cut back on sugars. Like I can't, I've tried, I've tried it all. I've tried the healthy versions. I've tried the safe versions. I've tried like, you know, making sure that I like do all my macros and that I'm just upping up. I get like addicted and then I like cut everything. And if I cut out, they're like, Oh, just cut the carbs. You're good. I'm like, I've done it. I've done it. Carbs are not bad. I love (sighs) carbs. Um, but it's like, it's also sad that like we've glorified this thing so much that it's like weird when someone isn't doing it. They're so offended by it. Like if, the, the, the most applauded fat people who exist on the internet are the people who are actively trying to change the fact that a hundred percent actively. And on top of that, they're like complete. They're like, look at that trashy version of myself. Now look at me now after I've lost four before and afters are like the worst thing in the entire world. And I was the queen of them. Oh, like they yep. were like my pride and joy when I had yeah. lost, I lost a hundred pounds when I was 29 to 30. Um, mm-hmm. And it, like, I posted, I found every unflattering photo of me that made me look bigger than I was as well. And then, like, posted distorted videos of me sucking in on the internet. I remember, actually, it was when Bryce and I first started dating, which was, like, I was 30 when we got together for the first, or we started dating. Um, We went on this, like, road trip, and I facetuned every single photo of ours um, to make myself look like my face was a lot thinner. Um, And Bryce, for years, would go back. Did he call you out? 
No, but he didn't know I did it. So he would go back and look at these photos and be like, my face was so thin. Like, what have I done so differently that my face is so much chubbier now? <laughs> Wait, you facetuned him too? Well, you Sarah. Face -tune, if you facetune a photo with both of you, it just like stop. So for, I didn't know that. Yeah, so for years, this poor man had thought that like he had changed because oh, I was no. insecure with my face. And he oh, like, no. like finally when I told him, he's like, Sarah, I've been like upset about this for so long. He's like, not that like it doesn't matter, but like I didn't know how I had changed so much. And I was like, oh my god, I'm a monster. I'm a monster. No, but it, it's it's not like you were ill. You were mentally <laughs> ill. And like that's just it. Like it's an addiction. I never I never learned how to face tune or like do things like that. But I, the one thing I did do is I relied very heavily on Snapchat filters. So what oh, I would do yeah. is I would use like the big eyes, chiseled nose. Chis that was my, like through my whole, like, if I look back at all the photos of myself from like 2017 on, they're all taken with that stupid filter. I just want <laughs> filters to go away forever. I'm over it. Unless I'd it's like a cute, like color changing, like it just changed the sure. mood aesthetic. But like the ones that like smooth your skin. Oh my God. You like- big eyes. I like also look crazy whenever I use them. They look no, it's, so bad on me. It's so, it's very night and day. Like, I'm just like, yeah. ah, like I'd rather no. look like this. No, I think, I think you're right. Like, I think lighting has a big thing to it as well. Like yeah. different lighting, different angles. I mean, listen, I grew up in a fat body. I know my angles. I know my angles. Okay. Well, yes. <laughs> That's my life. But at the same time, like, I'm not going to spend time learning how to like edit do you know they can edit videos now too well bold, so bold glamour on tiktok has taught me that it's very reason like yeah no but like i'm saying like you record a video with no. your camera like you like this camera you do a normal video and you can face tune the video no you can face tune your waist you can face tune it. your face you can face tune your arm i didn't even know that was a thing until someone on tiktok they're like look at this video of me standing outside and then it showed her in real time i would not have been able to clock i hate it, it. I literally, I, I was like, that looks so legit. That's scary. We've just like gone, we've gone like full circle back to the nineties with like, Ugh, yeah, with technology, which is even yeah. worse because now it's not just like, yeah, the standards it's, are outrageous. It's like, you can't live up to it. Like you literally, no. and I, something else that I learned too, but again, this is hearsay. Like, I truly don't know if. I, I only say what I hear. This yeah. isn't like from the horse's mouth. Apparently it shows like keeping up with the Kardashians. They're edited and filtered Probably. For, tele for television. But like, so I'm like, you're kidding. Like they're actually putting like edited and filtered on television programs. Well, like, I mean, if you look at like their reaction to an unedited video or pictures of them have been like released online, like Chloe is like sent out cease and desist. And it's like, like oh you guys are literally like the ongoing beauty standards of the world right now. Like whatever you do, the rest of us will do. Not the rest of us, but like no, the media like decides. Have, no, yeah, like, and they have like they're they're raising the next generation. They have so many girls. Like oh my gosh, they all have girls. They all have girls, right? I think yeah. so. Yeah. Like it's just uh, I just I don't know. I just get tired. I just get really tired. And like I know that I can only speak for myself and my experience and like what I hope that Marlo and Sully and like you know, I I just hope that we're doing enough. Totally. And some days is some days it feels like I'm literally like pushing a brick wall. Like I'm and, pushing and pushing and nothing's getting through. And I I don't think that unfortunately, like I'll will ever live in a time where like all bodies are accepted. I don't think we will. I don't think that I think that sadly the world isn't gonna be there for a very long time if it's ever there. Um yeah. and I just want Sully to just like not think about it. Like I don't yeah. want her to like same with Mark. Like I just don't want them to think about it. I don't want them to no. be something that they obsess over. I want her to be 12 and playing with whatever 12 year olds, what do 12 year olds play with? I have no clue. Cards? Drunk elephant at Sephora. Oh <laughs> my God. Like I barely use drunk elephant. I don't, I don't have it. Like I, I just can't. like. That's actually <laughs> all over my for you page it's right now too. too. <laughs> so good. Um, But yeah, like I just want to like kids should be yeah. kids. Kids shouldn't yeah. worry about those things. And no. like give your whole life to be shamed. We don't need to start at that young. I know. I know. So and that's, ugh. I really just hope that 
everyone gives each other grace. Yeah. Let's stop talking about people's bodies. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just stop. Like, I don't want to hear if my body looks good. I don't want to hear if it looks bad. Like, let's just not talk about other people's bodies. You can say, oh my God, your outfit is fantastic. Or like, girl, like, I love your hair. I love your makeup. I love this. I love that. Like, you can say, oh my God, you look so good today. Like, you look so fresh and radiant and happy. You look happy. But let's not just be like, you look so thin. Like, oh my God, have you lost weight? It's or, ridiculous. Ugh, it looks like you've gained weight. Like, like, why do we need to talk about that? We don't. And I think, I think it was like my mom once used to tell me, also she was a very polarizing human, um, but she'd be like, if you can't change it in 10 seconds, you don't get to comment on it. Yes. hundred like, percent. that's such a great way to think about it. Yeah. I love that. Like, I love that aspect. I'm going to continue yeah. to use it for myself, my kids, but it's, and it's a hard habit to break too, yes. because I was, I was, I, lo- I thrived off people saying like, oh my gosh, lost weight. What are you doing? I was like, yeah, give me more. Tell like, me everything. <laughs> I yeah. want to hear everything. I was trash before. Look now at now. I'm so at much. Now. <laughs> I'm whole now. <laughs> well, you're like more broken than ever. I literally can't even stay awake at one <laughs> o'clock in the afternoon because I'm so malnutritionally oh. divided. Oh my God. But yeah, no, I think just not commenting on people's bodies. Like, totally. let's just not talk about it. Why do we I need have, to? I have one other question. Do yeah. you have a hard time not making your platform about your, like, was that hard for you when you first started too? Like not making your platform about your body? I don't know. Like, that's a tough question. So like, I... I don't know. Like in what sense? Like talking well, about my body or well, like- Well, so like my platform started off, a set, I mean, be, after my small makeup face, um, it was all about like plus size fashion. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. And so okay. like my whole platform essentially was like about being a confident plus size woman. And I am very much so now, like there's so much more to me than that. Yeah. And so now I- put outfits together but I try not to like lean on like the plus size or midsize aspect of it it's just like no it's just what this I is wear me today. as a human yeah yeah but it took me like probably three two years to like kind of realize that and like move away from it yeah. um and not make everything I do about being in a bigger body a hundred percent and that's I think that goes with growth and like exist like I all my content has shifted I still do some of like the classic content. I still do my, what I eat in a days yeah. and I don't do them anymore to be like pushing it in people's faces. Mm-hmm. I just know they're comforting for a lot of totally. people Totally, yeah. and the whole aspect of it. And not only that, but it, it gives me meal ideas. It gives everyone else meal idea, e- easy meal ideas. Mm-hmm. And just the aspect that it is helpful to see people eating um, for people, for people to like see di- people of different bodies eating food and like unashamed like what is that word like Unash- unabashedly Un- I don't know nah. I was gonna say unashamedly but that's like that's not a word eating food happily yeah like it's just it's okay you know what I mean and yeah, yeah every day is different that's just my life I'm this type of person who can't do meal prepping I can't eat the same thing every day mm-hmm. because I get very bored very quickly yeah um, but no, I have shifted my content a lot to more lifestyle, just to things that I enjoy yeah. because I don't want to focus solely on like self, like, like I'm just like, I feel okay. Like I feel good about life yeah. right now. So like, obviously I can relate back to when I wasn't or like this and that, but like, I just want to exist and make content I love and content that everyone else is love. Everyone else loves mm-hmm. obviously the content that does best is the, is the content and that's the heart I find that, that like, that's I the built my thing. platform on yeah but I think that I just as long as I keep pushing doing what I love and like continue on with it and like I keep trying new things too yeah because I I don't know what's going to stick and what I'm going to love so like the mini vlogs or like mm-hmm. you know makeup tutorial and like I just like switching it up every once just in a while just making just having fun and letting people on on the ride yeah and I'm still me like I'm still doing everything as I do it like that's not going to change it's yeah. just you know, I'm just trying new things. And my goal this year is actually to get better at like my editing. Like I want not like crazy, crazy, amazing editing, but like, I love editing. It's one of my favorite things to do. And I really want to like get better at it. Like not like every single video I do is like Oscar worthy cinematography. I mean, (laughs) it already is. Thank you. (laughs) But yeah, I'd like to do a little bit more like editing. That's, I like that goal. That's also, yeah. my goal is, this is so off topic, but like just like better 
content, like better looking yeah. content, not just yeah. like, yeah. And it's been fun to like, you've been using your camera, haven't you? Well, look at me go. <laughs> How is that going? I feel like I have, I have a good camera that I could be using too. It's I awesome. think it's just, I think it's the convenience of being able to shoot on your phone, edit on your phone. You get can it still all edit done on your phone though. I know. And that's just it. Like, I think, I think for me though, is when I shoot with my camera, like I use my editing software on my com- oh, like computer. Yeah. I put like, I put my whole butt, butt into it. I love I do that it for all. you. I love that and for you. It's great, but it takes a long time. It is like, a lot longer. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. it's been, it's been good. I just like upload it to my cam. I go from my camera to my phone and then just mm-hmm. edit on my phone. The quality looks fantastic. Thanks. Thanks. There you go. 2024 yeah. is the year of editing and quality, camera quality. It's a quality yeah. year. You could say it's a quality year. <laughs> <laughs> I got that. Um, awesome. Well, I think that was like a a nice way to talk about diet culture. Like, yeah, I and I like really hope didn't... I I really hope no one feels like upset by this or like no. maybe I, hopefully it just gives you a little bit of insight to our life and what we've experienced mm-hmm. what we've lived through and makes you feel a little bit okay that you're not alone or that maybe you know you don't have to start a diet on January 1st maybe or, you could just start by eating a little more protein or drinking a little more water or read a book or That's yeah like my, stop doom scrolling read a book see how that works for do you do nothing that is it, it, like yeah. Do nothing that has to do with diet or food or no. anything like just enjoy life. No, just enjoy life. And if you, if you need to do something, just make sure you're safe, make sure yep. you're okay. Mentally. Yes. A lot of people forget about mental health. They're like, it doesn't exist. Physical health is the only thing I care about. No, it's like, no, take care of your mental health. Take totally. care of your soul. And just remember soul. like dieting doesn't fix that shit. If it's already broken. No. Oh my God. Let me tell you, like it I doesn't... was miserable at my smallest size. Yeah, if you hate miserable. yourself fat, you're gonna hate yourself skinny. Like it, like it doesn't, it doesn't. It's change. unfortunately the case. Yeah, yep, yep. Well, <laughs> don't hate yourself. We love you. We love you. We will be here. We make... will continue to talk about these things that make other people uncomfortable. Yeah. All right. Well, have... so if you if you haven't, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you and follow. follow us. Make sure you go to our little Tiki Talkie and our little Instagram and our YouTube and give us some ratings, give us yes. some comments, give us some ideas and um, we'll be here. We'll see you next week. Can't wait. Yay. Okay, bye. Bye.